Hey, what's up? I'm Rue, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Congratulations with Chaos and Bloom. Uh, we were just talking about how, like, prior to this, you know, we were talking about another release that you had done. Um, and just listening to, to, uh, Valenciaga and then listening to this new EP chaos and bloom, like I do feel, and I do hear like, a, a, an evolution in your sound in your singing in your writing. Um, yeah. can you like talk to me a little bit about like the, the difference of the process on this new EP? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously with, with every artist, you know, there's, there's always growth, you know what I mean? I think that like, as an artist, you constantly want all of it and change doing, you know, it's me to like, you know, I'm, I'm a, a creative at heart. I do, I design and stuff like that. And um, I'm really heavily into fashion. And so it's like, you know, with, with music, especially like I always am like onto the next thing. So like right when I put something out, I'm already, I've already started on another project that I'm working on or the next song or the next EP or something. Um, so yeah, so from Valenciaga to, uh, to Chaos and Bloom, um, you know, it was more like Valenciaga had a lot of lo-fi stuff happening. It was a little bit more of an indie sound, um, but still with like, you know, the, the pop sensibility, kind of alt pop kind of stuff at heart. Um, and in between that, you know, like uh, I did a song with Modson, which was super cool. And, um, you know, the sound just kind of evolved. Like I just, you know, I've always been, a, a, I've always just gravitated towards pop music. You know, I'm just a, a pop singer at heart. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, I started working with some other people. Um, this, the album has like, you know, probably like 20 different people worked on it. And it was just a huge collaborative effort. And I just feel like it really embodies like who I am as a person. I got to talk about a lot of things. We chose from like, shoot, like 50 songs, nailed it down to those six. And um, yeah, it was just like, you know, it's just, I, I've had to pick the ones that I felt like really told the story about like what I was going through because Chaos and Bloom is really, um, really just about like, you know, just the absolute like disarray that my life was in. And I had to take a step back and look at it and say, man, this is all beautiful. It's all beautifully working together. You know what I mean? It's completely out of my control, but like every, all the little cogs are meshing together and things are just working and it's like, it's chaos, but it's like, it's absolutely amazing how beautiful my life is, you know? So um, that's essentially what the EP is about is just, you know, just being caught in the middle of, of this, like of this storm that you have no control over and just looking at it from a distance and be like, oh shit, like it actually all works. You've always been, you know, a pop kind of guy. But I get, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I get this feeling that the opening track, Missing Your Bones, is the poppiest I've ever heard you on yeah. a track. Um, so tell me a little bit about this song in particular. And did you feel like it was a different way of songwriting and a different way of singing since it was such a popular song? Um, so, I mean, that Missing Your Bones is definitely the song that I always wanted to write, I feel like. You know, like that, when I, when we wrote that song, I wrote that song with, uh, with two of my, my friends, they're, they're a production duo called The Wavies, extremely talented guys. And, um, you know, we were like, we blended a couple different sounds together and we're like, when that, when we got the, when we finished the track, I was like, this is literally like the song that I've always wanted to write and the song I always want to sing. And they're like, well, what do you want to write about? And I was like, dude, I hate the internet. <laughs> I was like, I hate the internet and I just want to be back in front of people again. I want to be out on tour. I want to perform in front of people. I want to have that real human connection. And that's what that song's about is like, you know, just being able to be in touch and feel and connect with someone on a human level instead of through a screen. And, um, you know, that's what that song's about. You know, the bones is like the core of our, our bodies, you know what I mean? So it's like what holds us all together. So that's just what I've been missing is that real human interaction. And, um, yeah, man, it's, it's definitely very poppy, but definitely the direction that, um, that Rue is going to be going in moving forward for sure. How would you say that impacted your vocals? Did you find yourself uh, learning to sing a new way uh, in order to make this song happen? No, um, I actually, th I think that I kind of just like, you know, got back to the core of, of, you know, the, I started singing, which the sync album, <laughs> the, uh, um, dude, I, I found in the, in sync record, no strings attached when I was like 17 years old and 
I literally fell in love with that. And that's why I started singing pop music. I started that group, The Divine, a, a while back. Um, but yeah, man, I think that I just kind of just went back to my to my core of why I love singing. And, you know, I love Michael Jackson and Justin Timberlake. And, you know, it's just like, you know, I, I think that's just me singing without without trying to to do anything outside of who I really am, you know. Yeah, just being just genuinely just singing and, and talking about some shit that was real and honest. And that's what that's another thing that I love about um, about what I'm doing is, you know, it's like I I'm not a huge fan of just like of empty lyrical content, you know what I mean? Just like songs that don't mean anything, you know, and I think pop music's great if they, if you're if you're really connecting with someone, if you're talking about something that's honest and real and genuine. Um, and that's what I'm aiming to do, you know, what I mean, because I love pop music, but I hate pop songs that don't have any meaning to them you know what i mean like i do not that shit at all you know something that just does not you're just like you listen to it, you're like what what the fuck is that about you know um but yeah so that's definitely uh you know just bringing i guess it, it's alternative pop i guess essentially you know i don't really like putting a, a label on it but but you've always been very true to your music and that's one thing that i that i've loved that like when we listen to your songs not only you know are we getting these emotions out but we also like we kind of feel you singing these emotions as well like we we feel these emotions coming out of you um and i mean a good example would be hit harder which mm -hmm. is like completely different from the opening track missing your bones but hit harder like it takes us into this different perspective of your life in a different world and like this different kind of feeling where it's like I've been there before. Like I know how that shit felt and I hated like being on the ground and still getting kicked up, you know, like, yeah. so being able to kind of change your songwriting the way that you did throughout this EP, like how, I mean, what, how would you say that impacted you in also finalizing which songs were going to make it for this EP? Um, it was, I mean, primarily just like telling the story, like this past year was really rough. Um, you know, being an artist, I think that we all struggle. I think people in general, part of the human condition, drug, struggle with self-doubt. You know what I mean? Obviously, there's confident people, but at some point in in your career, especially from from my standpoint, just being a uh, you know an artist and a creative, like you know you're your own worst critic. And I'm constantly struggling with like, is this good enough? Am am I good enough? You know, and what do I measure success by? You know, like all these all these things that that take a, a you know a role in you know, the way that you conduct yourself artistically. And, um, you know, I hit harder was about a situation, you know, my dad and I, if my dad's my, been my best friend since, you know, since I was born and I've never had a conversation with my dad and me and my dad haven't talked in like eight months, you know, we got into this really bad fight. I was already going through some shit and me and my dad got in this horrible fight. So I haven't talked to him, unfortunately. Um, but you know, it's like, I wanted to take all the situations that like really impacted my life and, you know, from, you know, being, uh, you know, out, like, you know, I struggle with alcohol and drug addiction, you know what I mean? And, um, with depression and anxiety and just all the shit that it's like, you know, if, if I don't talk about this stuff and I don't like, you know, put this out into the world and say, Hey, here's my experience for someone who's going through it. Cause I've like, you know, gone through it and had to struggle with it and then was able to come out at the end of it feeling okay. But there's people who are in the midst of it who need to hear that it's okay. And that you're going to be all right at the end of it. You know what I mean? That you don't gotta, you know, you don't gotta subscribe to the feeling and, and just be like, this is it. This is the end of it, you know? Um, so I wanted to make sure that I hit all those points. And so it wasn't, so those emotions in those situations didn't go in vain. You know what I mean? It was like all for nothing. Um, yeah. Just cause I feel like, you know, our experiences, like we get to share our experience, strength and hope with people, you know what I mean? So that's really what I wanted to talk about on the EP is just like all those serious instances that happened in my life you know i mean even like with losers losers i had to go on the ep just because it's like you know it's definitely a, a fun song you know but it's also there's so there's kind of some sad shit in that song too you know what i mean about just like you know just being a kid just being living a crazy lifestyle just like feeling like you have anybody at the same time you know what i mean even though like you're with a bunch of people so um yeah i don't know man it just like it was just really trying to just figure out how to tell my story within the span of six songs that so didn't want to put an album out had to be within six songs so it was a challenge picking those six for sure that you've continuously been very vulnerable and open to your audience uh that's never been like a secret that's never been an issue but as you continue to create more music and you talk about more and more things that you went through 
do you feel like these conversations are easier to put to pen and also record? Or do you feel like you still find yourself struggling to get them out? Um, I don't know, man. I think I'm a pretty open book for the most part. You know, I think that my calling in life is definitely to to talk with people. You know, I've lived a lot of life and, and have had a lot of experiences. And, you know, I'm not... I'm not like Elliot Smith where I'm just like constantly depressed. You know what I mean? It's things that I deal with. It's shit that I deal with. You know what I mean? Um, but I just, I love being able to talk to people about how they feel. You know, like I'm, I'm not a huge uh, astrology guy, but I am, I am a Pisces and you know, like I'm just a very empathetic person. You know what I mean? I just, I, I love hearing how people feel about situations, being able to talk them through it. And, you know, if I can do that through my music, then I feel like that's, you know, I, I've been successful at my uh, endeavor, you know. You had various people work on this project with you. Uh, yeah. What would you say were some of the biggest challenges that you found yourself facing um, while you're adding additional members or additional collaborators? And, you know, also, like you mentioned, you had like 50 songs written up for this. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Contrary to what most people think, the music business is very, um, there's no playbook for it. You know what I mean? Um, especially with songwriting and stuff like that, you know, it can get a little bit messy, um, you know, especially just bringing people in. You know, it's like I come from a background of being in bands and stuff like that when I was younger. And I love writing with people who I know, you know, just not walking into a studio one day and be like, let's write a song. You know what I mean? It's like we don't have any connection with each other. How can we write a song together? Um, so, you know, building a lot of relationships was a, was a big part of this process. You know, you go in with, a, with some people, you meet them, you hang out. If you mesh, things kind of, you know, take care of themselves and, and the music kind of just comes together. Um, but there was definitely a lot of challenges. You know, I, um, I feel like the people who, who were involved in the songs that ended up getting put on the album were people who I feel like I'm cut from the same cloth as, you know what I mean? Like I felt like I felt personally connected to the songs where I couldn't just be like, like I had to put those songs on the record. I felt um, obligated to, because I was so attached to the songs, you know, like these six were like, these are the songs that we wrote as like a family, you know what I mean? Where everybody was really involved in the process. It wasn't just like, you know, we slapped some songs together. We found a track and just like wrote some, some vocals over it. It was like, you know, it was like a, it was like writing it like a band, you know, we pulled out the guitars and, you know, we, we pulled out pianos and shit and we just like, we wrote songs. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it was definitely, definitely a lot of work. It took, uh, took about, yeah, about six months to write, to, to write the album out of all the songs and then, you know, to put it together and, um, you know, the, the branding and the, uh, you know, just the creative, the design aspects to it, you know, took me a while to really put together, even though it ended up being simple at the end, but, um, just creating, you know, all the, the visual content behind it was, um, you know, a lot of fun too. Now we all know you, you're an independent artist and you've been doing this yourself for some time already. But like one of the things that I love about you is that not only do you create these incredible songs, but you also are very into all of the visual aspects of it. So yeah. for example, your music videos are like, every time you release a new video, I'm just like, I'm shook at like how legit like it looks like full production like you like a label would have done this. Yeah. So can you talk to me a little bit about how much of an impact these videos have on your music and you know how much of, a, of an impact do you have on the creation process? Yeah. Um, so all the all the um, like artwork and stuff like that I do myself. Um, photographs. I've. Uh, it's actually funny that that the cover photo of my of my EP was my wife holding my phone taking the photograph and my four-year-old holding a light to the side of me in my studio at our house. So that's how that photo was taken. <laughs> um, so a lot of it is very DIY, um, but I do have some, uh, some really sick photographers that I work with. My videographer, Tony, um, me and him have been friends since we were 15 years old. He shot my very first music video that I ever did as, as an artist, um, and we're still friends to this day. We became really good friends through that. Me and him are, are uh, my, one of my longest friends. But all the music videos, except for Losers, Losers had a big cast. Um, I think there was about 20 people involved in that. And that was a larger production. Um, but everything else has literally been me and Tony showing up. We light together and we figure out how we're going to shoot it. And it's just me and him on set shooting. Um, there, there's no like, you know, dude pulling the focus or dude handling the lights, just me and Tony there. 
Um, so I do appreciate that, that, that you said it looks like a, like a production because we do work, work really hard, but we shoot and then we literally go to his house and we start editing. Um, so very hands-on with that. I, I really, you know, I have a vision for what I want to be. And, um, you know, I just, I want to be able to uh, articulate that visually too, to people, you know what I mean? Keep say it, some of the videos are really simple, but they emote, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of feelings, you know what I mean? I want people to visually be able to see that and captivate people with the visual and not make it like overcomplicated, you know what I mean? This like big extravagant storyline, you know what I mean? Amazing. Well, with this EP out now, like, can we look forward to some shows? Like, do you have anything in the works yeah. as far as like maybe tours or, or even live stream performances? Yeah. So, um, next year I'm definitely going to be on tour, uh, majority of next year. Um, don't have exact details on that yet, but uh, there is going to be a Los Angeles headlining show in February, which I'm super excited about. That'll be at the Troubadour, and I'm going to be announcing that soon. Um, I think pretty sure it's early February. Um, and then I have some shows coming up in uh, outside of the Los Angeles area uh, next month, I believe. So still waiting on details. Everything's kind of up in the air. Things keep getting moved around and stuff. So it's like, you know, we'll confirm something and then it'll be like, no, it's getting moved into the month afterwards. So it's kind of just like, it's all over the place. I don't really know exactly what's going on. I'm kind of just leaving that to my team to just kind of let me know where to be. And, you know, it's like, you know, we're starting rehearsals today. Oh wait, no, we're actually going to push it back a week. You know what I mean? Just it's like so much going on. It's like, I, I can't, I can't stay on top of it, but um, definitely though, there's going to be a tour next year. I'm going to be releasing an album um, next year as well, like a full album, which I'm really excited about. And um, yeah, man, just going to keep pushing forward and, and making this happen. I kind of feel like I had a lot of momentum uh, at the beginning of 2020 and um, I'm just ready to get started and, and pick that shit right back up again. That's dope. Well, lastly, to close us off, like with Chaos and Bloom, like what what is the proudest moment that you have from this record, whether it's like during the writing process, during the recording process or even the release of it? Um, wow. Man, there was... So many, so many great, great moments during this record. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, Missing Your Bones is just like a steeple for me in my career. I absolutely love that song. I'm so attached to that song. <laughs> you know, a lot of, a lot of people told me it wasn't going to work, but I just, I absolutely love that song and I'm going to, I'm going to fight for that song. And I just, I think when that, when the EP came out, it was, it just felt really good to be able to put all this music out that I've been working so hard on. And being able to like, it's like my life is like starting. It kind of feels like I have another, another child being born and I got to put a record out and it's just like, yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's, um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. I just, I just feel like the, the release of the album was probably like the, the most exciting part of it all. And it just was just a beautiful moment for me. I was literally laying in a hospital bed. My wife and my newborn baby were saying, laying in the hospital bed and I'm just like curled up on this little couch just sitting there like looking at it, you know? um but yeah man it's just crazy it's just crazy how things work you know it's just all it's all really beautiful i'm just i couldn't be happier well you never disappoint man everything that you've done uh early on and even today like it's always been like a masterpiece um or masterpieces that you continue to create so i look forward to more from you and uh i can't wait to do this again in person man because yeah. you know the energy that you exude every single time it's amazing Thank you, man. Yeah, you got to come out to the Troubadour. It's the the show's going to be at the at the Troubadour. So I definitely would love to have you out there and hang out. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I still have to catch you live, so I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to that. Live show is <laughs> going to be insane, man. It's you know it's a whole different um whole different experience in the record. You know, full band and it's just you know it's fun. It's a lot of energy and it'll be a good time. Nice, dude. Well, congratulations with Chaos and Bloom, and uh, looking cool. forward to doing it again, man. Yeah, man. Good talking with you. Good to see you.